I'm going to have Kofi Zion on my base, 117B. Uh, the last few of the narrow lines. The, um, the question is uh, how much you would uh, save on Shabbos uh, uh, food. Uh, the Allah is that if there's a fire that you could save uh, food to a, a place that actually has an Eruv. And even though that really it's not muksa and you're allowed to carry it to an Eruv, the issue is that uh, we're afraid that if you get involved in saving things, then you would put out the fire. As we mentioned uh, uh, from, you know, from the start when we're dealing with this in, in Sefer Torah, just a reminder that, uh, of course, this is only talking about where there's no danger to life. Um, and, it, where, and as Allah says, where we live, usually there is a danger to life. But if it's uh, fire, and as um, Mr. Rosa point out, pointed out in the case of Morris's father, the silo, where it's outside in the field, it's not a danger of life to anybody. Um, so then you wouldn't say. So Hitzel, turn our button. Hitzel pass in the kia, the ein matzel pass a draw, ein matzel pass a draw. If somebody saved a good bread, he would not go back and, and save uh, a, a, a bread that is of, uh, uh, of uh, lesser uh, uh, flour. Pass a draw. However, if he saved this bread that is not of such fine flour, matzel pass the kia, can go back and get the better bread, because that that's covered Shabbos. So even though that he already has a food, he can go and get the better one. And on Yom Kippur also, he can save, if Friday is Yom Kippur, uh, he could go in and save food, even though he can't eat today, but he could go and save for Shabbos. But of course he can't save from Shabbos to Yom Kippur, because on Yom Kippur he doesn't eat, and after Yom Kippur he'll get other food. And for sure from Shabbos to Yom he can't, because on Yantav, you're allowed to cook and make food. Also, you can't save on Shabbos for a future Shabbos. Tanarabana. Shachach pas betanur. The breads that they used to make were flat breads that were made on the wall of an oven. Um, the fire was on the uh, bottom of the oven, and the opening was either on the side or on the top. And it would uh, slap a, a, a flat dough, uh, think uh, like a large tortilla, on the wall of the oven. And, um, and when it was ready, it would remove that bread from the wall, but in a manner that the bread was, wouldn't fall on, uh, onto the fire. So that was a skill to be able to remove it. So somebody forgot the bread in the oven prior to Shabbos. And now Shabbos came in, and he and the bread is is uh, in, still in the oven. So Matzina must have shalish through this. So he can take out enough bread for uh, three meals. If he made a large batch of bread and there's plenty there beyond the three meals, he can't take it. So what does he do? He could call his neighbor and say, "Come and take some bread uh, from my oven." Uh, uh, when he removes it, he shouldn't use the specific uh, uh, utensil, the peel, that's made for removing this bread. Elabasakin, rather he should use a knife. So, so we see over here that he's allowed, so this is back to what, what we saw yesterday, that he can, he can get uh, uh, neighbors and, and, and trick uh, and fool the system where his neighbors don't need the bread, and nevertheless he can break Shabbos for, for that. So the Gemara says, the the reason is because really uh, blowing shofar and removing uh, bread from the oven, is actually not, both of those are actually not a Torah prohibition or even a rabbinic prohibition really, meaning they're not a malacha or even a type of malachan. They're just a skill. And therefore, they should not be prohibited. And they're only prohibited in as much as it, that since it's a skill and most people can do it, it's like creative work, but it isn't. You're not doing anything. You're just removing the, uh, the, the, the bread from the wall of the oven in a skilled way. And therefore, really, it, it's permissible on Shabbos. 
uh, because they're not doing anything. It just looks like, sounds like a, a, a creative work, and people may think it is. And therefore, come at that, uh, so therefore, uh, is in such a case where he needs the food, he's allowed to do it. Um, and uh, he could call his neighbors and, and trick them as well. So if, uh, 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 not trick them, meaning have them a part of this trick the system, say he got three meals for himself and he's getting some neighbors to get three meals for their se- themselves, even though they probably have bread already for Shabbos. And comma the Efshar, the Shanim, the Shaninim, and also as much as he can change, he's going to do so. He's going to use a knife instead of the actual utensil made for it, the peel. But, um, uh, but the, but uh, uh, in, in and of itself, it's not a malacha, and there, that's why he's allowed to do this. But before, when we were talking about an actual malacha or, or, or a real muksa of uh, either um, uh, uh, bringing, of, uh, bringing the animal up from the, from, uh, from the pit, which is a muksa, there, uh, there was a, uh, there was a machlokas of whether or not you're allowed to do such a ha'arama, such a, a trick. Amar Avchistan. So now we're going to get into preparation. Since we're talking about the meal, or the food of Shabbos, we're getting into the preparation and the obligation of having three meals on Shabbos and preparing and honoring Shabbos through its festive meals. That a person should get up as, as early as they can on the mo- uh, Friday morning to start the preparations for making food for Shabbos. As it says, and it was on the sixth day, and they prepared that which they brought, and that they, meaning that they got ready early, right away they started preparing for Shabbos. A person should break bread on two loaves of bread. Uh, we have uh, Lechem Mishnah, double. Why is that? Because it says in the Mun that a double portion came. And so for each meal, we also have a double portion. Normally you need one piece of bread, one, one uh, loaf of bread. But for Shabbos and Yantiv, uh, we have two loaves of bread. And uh, they should be whole breads. They should be complete, not just slices, unless that's all you have and you can't get it. But it should be whole, uh, a whole uh, loaf, uh, loaf of bread, a whole roll, a whole matzah. Could I, could I ask something, please? <laughs> um, we welcome so, questions, even from you. So... I'm, I just happen to be learning right now, but in the halacha... It, it, a, a person is not supposed to do, not before davening, you're not supposed to, you know, do work. You're not supposed to involve yourself in, in taking care of your activities. But you could go shopping for Shabbos. It, but here it sounds like it's, it's you should go. I mean, you should, you should, Yashkin, you should wake up early and, and, and start doing these things for Shabbos. Well, it doesn't mean that, that you have to do it before davening. That doesn't mean you have to do it before davening. You're allowed to do it after davening as well. It just means uh, get get to it as soon as you can. Wake up early and 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 um, and prepare. Meaning make it make it a a a, a chore, a, 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 an obligation of the day. And so you have a mission. You have something to do. Um, so you're gonna go. You shop. You, whether it's shopping, whether it's uh, it's cooking, preparing, and you're right. Generally, we say that no personal work should be done prior to Shabbos, prior to Davani. And But for Shabbos, it's a sort of mitzvah, so certain things are allowed to be done. So to hear. But it's Lab Dafi, you have to wake up early and start doing it. it you can get, wake up early in Davin. You can wake up early in Davin and then go right. shopping. Correct. Right. Okay. So you need, to, you need to say the bracha on two breads. I saw of Kahana that even though that he had two breads in his hand, but he only broke one of the breads. He only uh, cut and, and ate one of the, one of the breads. Because Amar, uh, it says that they gathered double portion, but they didn't eat a double portion. So they gathered a double portion of man, but they ate one portion. So we have two portions in our hand and we cut through two. 
and cut through what? Rav Zera, I have a bunch of akula shiri The 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 some Rishonim learn what Rav Zera, what he would do is he would cut out all the breads and cut through all the breads, uh, and and that's the contrast with Ravashi. Rashi doesn't learn that way. Rashi doesn't learn it's a contrast. Rashi learns that these are two separate halachas. Ravashi uh, would eat uh, one of the two breads, and the Gemara leaves it at that. You don't. You only have to cut through one bread. However, uh, it says the Rav Zera, when he cut from the bread, he didn't just cut a small slice for himself. You'd cut an, a, a, a large enough slice or enough slices that he would get um, enough to eat uh, for the whole meal. And that looks like he's hoarding, and that looks like he's, he, he, that, that he's a glutton, that he, he's taking a, a big piece for himself. And generally, we would not say that. Uh, it's appropriate. Um, according to Rashi, taking such a big piece for himself, he looks like he's a glutton. Uh, uh, according to the uh, Rishonim that learned that this is that he cut through both breads, that looks gluttonous. Since every day he doesn't do this, and today he did that, it, it, it doesn't look like he's, he, he's a glutton. Rather, it looks like he's doing it in honor of Shabbos because he doesn't do this every day. So you can tell that this is a, a, a special uh, thing he does for Shabbos. And indeed, this is the halacha that somebody would cut through one bread and cut a, a large slice for himself. The Ramos says that Friday night, you cut through the, uh, the uh, you have two breads, one above the other, and you cut through the closer one that's been below on Friday night. And on Shabbos, you cut through the upper one, and Yantav, you always cut, the, cut through the upper one, and you take a large piece uh, of, of the challah, and then you give it to the other per, uh, people at the table or the guests, and then you eat. Uh, you eat some, and that the guests shouldn't eat prior to you eating, since you made the bracha. Ravami Ravasi Kimiklu who rifted the eruva shara shara When they had the opportunity that the bread that was given as the communal meal, as the eruv, was uh, available, they would make their bracha and uh, um, uh, wash and eat. The, uh, the the bread of the Eruv. Because they'd said, let's do another mitzvah with it because if one mitzvah was done with it already, let's continue and make another mitzvah and do another mitzvah with this bread. So uh, the Mishnah had said, if there's a fire, you can take three meals. Um, Friday night, Shabbos day, two meals. Uh, Shabbos afternoon, one meal. So Kate said, enough. Well, how many meals does a person have to eat on Shabbos? Shalosh. The Bryce says he has to have three meals. One Friday night, one Shabbos day, and one in the afternoon, Mincha time. Shalosh. Rav Chitka ma'arba. But Rav Chitka says that you need to have four meals. Three of the meals have to be by day. So that's besides for the Friday night meal. And they all, uh, 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 both, Rebbe, uh, both the Chachamim and, and Rav Chitka, Rav Chitka both learn from the same pasuk. And Moshe says, eat this man today. For today is a, um, is a day of rest. It's Shabbos for Hashem. Today you will not find any man in the field. So it says three times, eat it today. Uh, eat it today, for today is Shabbos. And today, there will not be any other uh, um, portions, any man in the field. So Rav Chitka said, that's, he, Moshe is talking to them in the morning. Because in the morning is when they went to, to uh, uh, they went to look uh, like every morning uh, for some man and didn't find any. He came to Moshe concerned saying, hey, there's no man no fresh man that came this morning. And he said, oh, of course, it's Shabbos. You got a double portion yesterday. So uh, according to Rav Chitka, that all happened in the morning. And so you have to have three meals, the three hayoms, three meals uh, during the day.
the bar miyotah besides for the one at night. For Rabbanu Sabri, bahadi or to no. When Moshe said three hayoms, eat it today, today, today. That's the entire Shabbos, including last night's meal. Tanan, we learn nafled leik. So we're going to try and prove it from our Mishnah. Tanan, we learn nafled leik belayla Shabbos. Friday night, uh, a, a fire broke out. So Matzila Mazer Gimel Sudas, he could save three meals. Now, if he's only ne- going to need uh, four, uh, if he's only going to need three meals, including tonight, so it makes sense that he saves three meals. But according to Chitka, that he needs three meals by day, besides for the meal at night, then he should save four meals. So says, "My love, Wouldn't you say that it means uh, he hadn't eaten yet? No, no. Maybe it means that he did eat, and therefore he only saves three meals for the day, but the night meal he already had. Similarly, it says Shachras in the morning. Matzila Mazer stays soon as he saves two meals. Love the loyachal. We're going to say that he didn't, that he didn't eat yet. Lo the achal. Perhaps he ate already. But mincha matzil and mazen suda achas in the afternoon mincha time. Say he's going to save one meal. My love the loyachal. Would you say that he didn't eat? Lo the achal that he already ate. Saying Mar says, okay, so there it's not proof, but look at the end. While midik tani sefer, but afterwards Rabbi Yosi Omer that Rabbi Yosi says. Lo ola matzila mazen gimel sudas mechalal the tanakama gimel gimel sudas sarili. So uh, Rabbi Yosi says, no, we always save three meals, meaning that's the total, three meals always, regardless by night, by day, and the afternoon. So you see that the tanakama is also saying three meals, even though he hasn't eaten. Ah, so we see that our Mishnah is not like a like a pchitka, and indeed our Mishnah. It says that you are obligated in a total of three meals, and not like a chitka that you need four meals. So therefore, we have to say the more appropriate answer is that our mission is not in accordance with chitka. Uh, it, it, and the Mishnah says in Peya, who is a pro, who is worthy of taking money from the communal coffers to. Uh, help feed themselves if they're in a time of need. So, so somebody has enough uh, fo- uh, food just for two meals. Uh, should not take from, uh, from the uh, communal kitchen, which is basically a bowl of food prepared for the, uh, uh, for the poor. If you have two meals worth, so you already have enough for today, so tomorrow you can take from the communal kitchen, but for today you have food. Mazen um, arbasi, but if he has enough for fourteen meals, which is a week's worth, then he shouldn't even take money from uh, 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 um, from the tzedakah, which is basically uh, money, not 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 prepared food. So the first one is the soup kitchen. To take from the soup soup kitchen, it must it ha- it means you have less than two meals, meaning you don't have enough for today. Um, and to take from, from the communal coffers, uh, um, tzedakah, is that you don't have enough to get through the week. In any case, but it says that a week's worth of meals is 14 meals. Now, both according to the Chachamim or according to Chidka, you'd need either an, one additional meal for Shabbos because you need three, or two additional for Shabbos because you need four. And why does it say that you only need 14 meals in the week. You should have 15 or 16. So, Mani, whose opinion is it? It's neither the Rabbanon nor Chitka. In Rabbanon, Hamesra Havi. If it's a Rabbanon, so you need 15 meals for the week because you have an additional meal for Shabbos. And if it's Rabbanon, who says that you need four meals on Shabbos, so then Shisri Havi. Then it would have to be um, 16 meals uh, uh, for the week. So why is this person not taking from tzedakah on account of that he has enough to get through the week, but he only has 14 meals, and for Shabbos he needs an additional one or two meals? So lalo rabbana. So we can explain it according to rabbana and say, no, really, this is the, their opinion. But we say to him, Well, Friday night's meal, which is one of the three meals, actually that should be your second meal on Friday. It'll be your first of three for Shabbos, but you can eat a lunch on, on Friday. And then 
uh, save your, your Friday evening meal and don't eat it until after you've made Kiddush for Friday night. So therefore, it's a Shabbos meal. So uh, you don't need an additional meal. The, you only have one on Friday before Shabbos and one on Friday after Shabbos that comes in. And so therefore, it's uh, 14 meals that get you through the week. So then we're going to have to say it must be the opinion of the Rabbanan and not Rav Chitka. So he says, no, perhaps we can even say it's Rav Chitka. I feel a time Rav Chitka. I'm really, we say to him, I'm going to 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 say to him. So he says, well, no, even according to Rav Chitka, we could say, keep all of your meals on Friday, the two Friday meals, one for Friday night and one for the extra meal on Shabbos day. So he says, what, what? And he fasts all of Friday? So if it's going to work according to Rabbi Chitka, it must be the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. And what, what is the opinion of Rabbi Akiva? There's a machlokas of whether somebody should borrow money or take tzedakah in order to have the extra meal of Shabbos. Do we say Shabbos is worthy of uh, uh, making festive and making delightful with an additional meal, even if it means taking tzedakah or borrowing money? Rabbi Akiva says no. The Tanya, a man of Akiva, the Amma, because he said, "Asay Shabbat Chachol, make your Shabbos meals equivalent to weekday meals. Make it just a, a simple uh, weekday meal, a bread and dip, rather than needing the help of humans. Uh, it, it, helping, um, even though that it is our obligation to take care of the poor, it is a personal obligation of people to." to uh, try and feed themselves from their own handiwork. As the Gemara uh, puts, a, 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 the Mishnah puts an, an enormous um, value to a person sustaining themselves. And Rabbi Kiva takes it to the degree that it is better not to have a special Shabbos meal. And according to Rabbi Kitka, not to have the extra Shabbos meal. And, and not to have special foods for Shabbos in order to not need uh, assistance from others. And this is what we learned. When uh, there's a passerby that's poor and doesn't have food, so we don't give him any less than a piece of bread, uh, than a bread which would be made um, of uh, a loaf that's worth a pundion, which is a certain coin. It's a 24th, uh, 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 um, so it's, uh, sorry, it's a 12th of a dinar, which is one forty-eighth of a cella. Um, so uh, it, whatever it, it, it is, a, a, a certain uh, um, a Roman coin, pundian. And uh, uh, you would not make less than a pundian's worth of uh, a loaf of bread for if the flour is four saw in a cella. So uh, in, in other words, it's giving a measure of how much, uh, what's the minimum bread you could give somebody who's passing by and poor in need of a meal. Lun, however, if he's staying in, this, in the city, meaning he's staying overnight at least, in the city, you give him, besides for that meal, you also give him the needs of the night. And later the Gemara is going to ask what that is. Ve'im Shabbos, and if it's Shabbos, you give him three meals worth. Uh, maybe this is the opinion of Rabbana because according to Rabbana, you need four meals. Perhaps this can even be according to Rabbana. No, the reason is because he's coming on Friday when he comes into town before Shabbos. He has one meal. That's what he has Friday's meals. And you're giving him the three meals. According to Rabbana, he's going to learn the meaning that you give him the three meals is the meals for the next day. The one you have with you. Wait, well, that means if he eats the one meal he has with him and you're only giving him three meals for Shabbos day, but it's a Shabbos, after Shabbos, when he continues on his way, he's not going to have anything with him. No, then when he leaves, in general, when somebody leaves town, you have to uh, give them, say the uh, 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 you have to give them some food uh, and, and, and something to have along the way. My part also, Selena, and for this one staying overnight, what, what, what do you have to give him um, for staying overnight? A bed, a bed and uh, a pillow and some, some cushion for his, if, to put his head on. It's 
So this is the obligation to have uh, three meals uh, on Shabbos, one Friday night, one Shabbos by day. It, uh, it, it does not have to be, according to Allah, the way we have it, it does not have to be uh, before the morning, sorry, before, um, before Chatzos. However, one should not fast until Chatzos. So one should eat something prior to noon, halachic noon, but it doesn't, the meal doesn't have to be before noon. Um, but as Tosis points out over here, and, uh, and it seems in halacha that uh, the, the uh, Suda Shlishis, the third meal, should be uh, after it's already Mincha time. And uh, uh, according to Rabbeinu Tam, it, it has to be after you already daven Mincha. That's where you're going to have your third meal. The dishes that you used for your Friday night meal, you're allowed to wash them on Shabbos in order to use them on, uh, on uh, Shabbos day. And it's not considered, um, uh, you know, a tedious work and not honorable or respectful to Shabbos. It's also not considered um, preparing because it's all for Shabbos. Shachris, Madichan. After your morning meal, you can wash them to eat your afternoon meal. You can eat and you can wash it to eat in the afternoon, in the evening. But after Suda Shlishis, after your third meal, you've eaten in the afternoon, then you don't wash the dishes. Why? Because you don't eat anymore for Shabbos. So now that you're washing them, you're clearly washing them for after Shabbos, that's preparing on Shabbos for after Shabbos, and is halachically uh, inappropriate to do, to work on Shabbos, even though that it's not a prohibited work, but to do something that's gonna be preparing you for after Shabbos is uh, 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 preparing for after Shabbos is prohibited. This becomes uh, um, uh, uh, a very practical issue. Um, generally, we don't talk hal- uh, halacha, uh, practical halacha here, but I just wanna talk uh, because this is very prevalent and important. So uh, Rav Shlomo says that today that we have a lot of dishes and we typically have pretty clean homes. So just to leave dishes around is, uh, it, it's not preparing for later. It's just not uncomfortable and, and, and disgusting for now. It's not an honor for Shabbos. So if somebody has a place like a dishwasher where they can put the dirty dishes until after Shabbos, so you can take your dishes and put them in there. Uh, you wouldn't rearrange it to stack it for after Shabbos because that's preparing. But you're allowed to put your stuff in and keep it there and close the door. And this way, you can keep the house clean and that would not be uh, uh, preparing for after Shabbos. Or similarly, if you have a bucket, you have a dish bucket that's filled with water, you can put your dishes into there and cover it. And that's a, another way to not prepare for after Shabbos, but to put, the, put it in there so that it doesn't harden, doesn't become more difficult. You're not preparing, you're just keeping it, maintaining it from not from drying up and becoming more difficult. And those are two ways that somebody would be allowed to uh, make sure that their house is clean on Shabbos without actually washing the dishes or after Shabbos. So cleaning off the table after Shabbos should have, et cetera, clearing the table, cleaning off the table, that's not it, it, it would depend on how close to the end of Shabbos it is and how uncomfortable it is to just leave it there. If we're talking about, you know, this 10 minutes, so, okay, see, so wait 10 minutes. But if we're talking about, uh, you know, there's two hours, uh, it's like a, right, like now, it's a long Shabbos afternoon, and you have Shabbos at 6 o'clock, and Shabbos comes out at 10 o'clock. Um, you don't have to leave the table uh, a, a total mess for four hours uh, or three hours or two hours just to say, you know what, I can't prepare for after Shabbos. It's not for after Shabbos, it's for right now. We don't live, we don't tend to live in a manner where we just leave a mess around uh, you know, for, for a long, um, you know, for a prolonged time like that. So it's, it's for the here and now, for the honor of Shabbos and, and cleanliness of now. I, just observing personally, there's different tolerances uh, for women and men, maybe. So I, you know, it's fine with me. Let it stay there for the next five hours. And my wife would be like, it can't stay there for the next five minutes. She, she just wants to, you know, everything's got to be clean. You can't leave a mess on the table. Yeah, I think there are different uh, people have different toler- tolerances for how how dirty it is. But uh, generally, um, uh, people uh, don't tend to leave a mess for a prolonged time, uh, even on a weekday. I mean, 
think about it. how long would you leave it on a, on, on a regular day? So if you wouldn't leave it there on a regular day, so then you're not preparing for later, you're preparing for now. Shabbos, this halacha, all I'm saying is this halacha doesn't mean you need to live in, in a mess on Shabbos. What this means is don't prepare for after Shabbos, but things that you're doing for the here and now to make now honorable and, and comfortable for Shabbos, that's appropriate. Avalkosis, however, Mati, you have a question? Can't hear you. Oh, I'm mute. Okay. Um, Sorry, no. Sorry. Okay, good. Shuvenim uh, avalkosis, however, glasses, cups, vikutonias, different type of cups, tzuluchios, and smaller plates, you know, glasses. Mediach, that he can wash the entire time even right before the end of Shabbos, because there's no specific time for drinking, meaning I may be thirsty even in 20 minutes, in 10 minutes, 10 minutes before the end of Shabbos. And so therefore, you can always rinse them because I may need a, a drink later. Anybody that has the three meals on Shabbos, is saved from three Difficult epochs, the different times that difficult times that come to to, to the world. from the birth pangs of Mashiach, which uh, are are a, a difficult uh, um, a difficult time. The Gemara and Ksuba says that when when uh, the generation that David and Melech, that uh, that the the, the, David, the Davidian dynasty that based David is going to be reestablished and the king. Uh, uh, Mashiach is going to come is uh, there's going to be enormous uh, opposition to Tamidei Chachamim and, uh, and to Torah and there's going to be these birth pangs, the difficulties Medina shall Gehenim and he's saved from the judgment of Gehenim Umimachem has Gog and from the uh, um, catastrophic war of Gog and Magog how do we know that he's saved from the Chavim Mashiach? And all this is going to be learned from that the fact that we learn the three meals for Shabbos from, uh, from, the, from the drash of Hayom, three times Hayom. We learn the three meals from the word Yom three times, and, which is day, three times it says, today you shall eat. Um, uh, and it says that behold I send to you uh, before that great day great and awesome day I'm going to send to you Eliyahu Navi Eliyahu the prophet so we see Yom that day the great day so he's saved from that and Medina shall Gehenim and Gehenim itself is also day it says over here Yom here we learn the three meals from Yom and it says over there, Yom, Today, that day is a, a day of anger, a day of, of, of retribution. Also, is called a day. Here, it's, we learn the three meals from a day. On the day that God came, it's a day. I'm Rabbi Yechon Mishim Rabbi Yossi. And Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yechon said the name of Rabbi Yossi. Um, anybody that makes Shabbos a, a pleasure, a delight, he, he gets as a gift a, a portion without boundaries. Right? Normally, if you have a, a, la, a, a land portion, it has boundaries. This blessing is a nachala, an inheritance, without any boundaries, it's endless. Shinema for it says, Az tisanagal Hashem, then you will have pleasure for Hashem, which is Shabbos. Vehir kavticha al bam se aretz, I will make you uh, um, ride upon the, the foundations of the earth. Vehachal ticha, and I will give to you nachlas Yaakov avicha, the portion of your father Yaakov. Why Yaakov? So now we're on Kufit Chesam at base 118b. Look, Avram, not like Avram, where, the, where his inheritance, it says, walk through the land to its length and breadth, which it tells you that there is a limit, there are borders. And 
And not like Yitzhak it says that I'm going to give you all of these lands, but these lands limit it. Eloki Yaakov, but rather a bracha like the inheritance of Yaakov, Shekasabo, where there it says, Ufaratsta Yamabakadma Tsafon of Anegba, and you will break through the boundaries north and, uh, um, sorry, yeah, west and east, north and south. Rav Nachman Yitzchak says that somebody who has three meals on Shabbos, Nitzel Meshibah Goliath, is saved from, and not only does he inherit in the time to come, but even now um, is saved from the difficulties of Golis. As it says over here, I will, I will um, ri- make you ride the, the foundations of the earth. And it says over there, and you, on their foundations, you will, uh, uh, um, uh, you, will uh, you will tread, you will um, uh, step. So um, they, the, the foundations are these heights that the oppressor builds for you, and you will be able to step over that and, and uh, um, uh, break out of the oppression of the gullahs. I'm going to have you down and then the review the setting name of Rav Kalama Anigas a Shabbos Nusalim Shalos Libut. Anybody that makes Shabbos a delight it receives the blessing that whatever he, he his heart desires comes. Shneimah for it says, "Vis Anigel Hashem Vietol Chamashalos Libcha." You you will be you will have Oneg. You will have delight and pleasure from Hashem, and we will give you all the desires of your heart. Oneg Zayni Deim Out. But I don't know which uh, delight on Hashem this is. When it also says, when you will call Shabbos a delight. I see that this is Onik Shabbos. It's the delight and pleasure of Shabbos. How do you make Shabbos pleasurable? A cook dish of, of Tered, of Tardin, which is a, a, a special meal, Rashi says. Honor, it's a, a honorable, the special meal. The dogging with and and big fish, as opposed to generally they would have little fish, sort of like uh, um, sardines and herring, and that um, and make it a nice uh, big fish. The rashi shuman, and um, and uh, roasted uh, garlic heads. Rabbi Chibar Ashi Amarav, Rabbi Chibar Ashi said in Amarav, a fillet of a muet, a lachvay Shabbos, a say or aonic. Anything you do for Shabbos, even if it's a small thing, but it's done in order to honor Shabbos, uh, that is onik Shabbos. Mahi, Amar Papa Kisa the Harasana, even um, a small fish in a fish sauce that uh, is hard to describe. It's fish guts and flour and who knows what. Not. But the idea is. You're, you're saving something special for Shabbos. You're making something special for Shabbos. I, I, any small thing that you have in order to make Shabbos a delight. Uh, you, you have a special garment to wear, you wear it for Shabbos. You have something new to wear, wear it for Shabbos. You have a, 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 a new dish to taste or a new food, uh, you, you taste it on Shabbos. Everything is a delight if you do it like covered Shabbos. Anybody that keeps Shabbos as, uh, in halacha as it's supposed to be. Even if he had served idols, like the generation of Enosh, or like Enosh himself, um, he w- it is forgiven to him. Um, uh, uh, it says before that, anybody that guards a Shabbos. And then it says, anybody, any person that does this is fortunate. Anybody that keeps the Shabbos, a simple reading is from desecrating it. Now, if you keep the Shabbos, that obviously means you're not desecrating it. So why does it say, it should just say, Kol Shomer Shabbos, everybody that, that guards the Shabbos. Why does it have to say, everybody that guards the Shabbos, Mechalalo, from desecrating it? So the drash is, al tikrim Mechalalo, it doesn't mean from desecrating it, rather, you split the word, it's a compound word, and it's Mechalalo, it is forgiven to him. Mechalalo. If Bnei Yisrael had kept the first Shabbos, they, um, um, they would have, no, no other nations would have had the ability to attack Bnei Yisrael. But unfortunately they didn't, because it says um, that 
the first Shabbos, they had man, Friday, double portion. Shabbos morning, people went out to gather the man, and that's a Torah prohibition of harvesting, ga- gathering in that which was uh, fallen, ga- gathering in your produce. And um, the next thing that happens is Amalek attacks. Shanem as it says, and it was on the seventh day on Shabbos, people went out to, to uh, harvest, to gather. And want to say afterwards, Amalek came. If today, Bnei Yisrael would keep two, sha- two Shabbosas in a row, uh, 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 according to Halacha, me- immediately they'd be um, redeemed. Shanema for says, So says Hashem to those that are childless, that cannot have children, um, that guard my, that will guard my Shabbases. Um, and this is future, they will guard, and plural, Shabbos. When it says afterwards, um, I will bring them to my uh, a holy mountain. So you see, they would be redeemed, we would be redeemed if we kept Shabbos, like two weeks in a row. Rabbi Yossi says, may it be my portion that I, I can, um, uh, that I can be of those that eat uh, um, uh, three meals on Shabbos. Once we mention this, Rabbi Yossi, we're going to bring a whole bunch of statements that Rabbi Yossi would say, may it be my portion uh, amongst this, that, or the other. And then we're also going to bring some statements he said about himself. Rabbi Yossi, may it be my portion amongst those that say halal every day. Ain't he? It's not so. If somebody says halal, uh, what we call halal every day, it's a desecration to Hashem because that means that he's, he's mocking the specialty and the special blessing of, uh, of the miracles that happen on special days. The person says, well, every day is a blessing. It's true, but some days uh, the miracle is more visible and those are the days you have to celebrate and say halal. No, Rabbi Yassi meant is it's the daily uh, uh, tehillim, the daily praises of Hashem prior to davening, what we call Pesuk Hidizim. Rabbi Yassi, Echelkim, Espalam, Dimdumi, Chama. Rabbi Yesi said, and it should be my portion with those that daven with the redness of the sun, which is uh, just as the sun comes up or just as the sun goes down, uh, th- those are the, the optimum time for davening shachras and davening mincha. It is the best when somebody can daven just as the sun is coming up and just as the sun is going down, when the sky is red from the sun. From which verse do we learn this? We will meet you with the sun when it comes up. Well, right before the moon comes out for generations. Rabbi Yesi said, May it be my portion that I die like those that die from, uh, from stomach ailment. As the uh, teachers taught, the majority of tzaddikim die from a stomach ailment because it's painful, Rashi says, and it and it heals them, and, and it, uh, sorry, it purifies them. May it be my portion that I die on the way to doing a mitzvah. May it be my portion that I am like those that bring in Shabbos in to Tiberi, in Tiberius, and, Tiberius, and uh, exit Shabbos like those in Sipori. Rashi learns it's a time thing. In Tiberia, it's low down in the valley, they, so they think it's dark earlier than it really is. And so they bring in Shabbos early. And in Sephora, it's on the mountain so they can see the sun uh, or, or the last rays of the sun uh, for longer. And therefore, they take out Shabbos late. And so to be the first to bring in Shabbos and last to take out Shabbos, that's what Rabbi is saying. Uh, others learn that it's uh, um, uh, um, beautifying Shabbos by adorning it and perfuming it before Shabbos. And like in Sephora, where they would perfume after Shabbos to, because it's special soul, the Neshami Yaseira that leaves, um, it gets besamim like we do besamim in, um, in Havdalah. May it be my portion for those that encourage people to come to, that, to the, to, to the uh, study hall and not those that tell them when it's over and make them leave. May it be my portion of those that, that, that uh, accept money on behalf of the poor. 
not the one that give it out because you, the research that you need to do to make sure that everybody gets what they need and you're not showing any bias is too difficult. May it be my portion that people accuse me of things that really are not true. Indeed, that happened to me. I was accused of something that was not there. I, Rabbi Yossi said, I had f- uh, relations five times, and with that, I, impl- I planted five uh, cedar trees for Bnei Israel. A man in Ilna, who are they? His five sons. Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chalafto, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Avtilos, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Menachem, Rabbi Yossi. The Gemara says, wait, you left one out. Vayikah Vardimus. Yeah, Hainu Vardimus, Hainu Menachem. Menachem is Vardimus. Ramai Karli Vardimus. So why was he also called Vardimus? Shepan of Demi Levarit, because his face was like a rose. The member of Rabbi Yossi, Mitzvah, Zayin Alekim. Wait, he only had relations with his wife uh, 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 and uh, those five times. There's a mitzvah uh, uh, to, to have uh, regular... Uh, intervals of uh, of relation with a wife. It's an obligation to her to keep uh, for for her um, uh, ob- his obligation as a married man to his wife. No, there are five times that he uh, uh, repeated and had relations with her again for her pleasure. And and as the Gemara said, we saw that uh, it, somebody that does that um, will have a son, and that's how he had these five sons.